Hey there guys, this is Sam from GamingTrapture.com and first of all just want to say a big thank you to everyone who watched the first video, uh, the first interview and a special thank you to all those of you who commented on the video and sent me personal messages. I really appreciate all the feedback and you know that's the way that the channel is going to improve by you guys giving feedback and then hopefully in the next couple of uh, videos I'm going to be able to implement your feedback and make the videos better so keep doing that. Uh, keep subscribing and keep suggesting to me um, interviewers who you'd like to see get interviewed as well. Um, so yeah, thanks very much for that. And I've managed to secure three interviews in short space of time. So uh, I've got the one today. I've got one coming up with YC himself, YC the reviewer uh, from YouTube channel Ultimate Chance, and I've got one from uh, with Jason from Three Kilobytes. So there's three of three interviews coming up in a short space of time. So hopefully. You guys will be able to enjoy those and give me feedback on those as well. Uh, so to kick off today, uh, I'm fortunate enough to be joined by Andrew, who's from YouTube channel Yuri of Wind. So some of you may know him from that. If he's actively on GamingRapture.com as well, so he's a member on there, so you might know him from that as well. So just to start off, say thank you very much to Andrew for coming along. Uh, I really appreciate you taking the time to come and speak to you, really. So uh, why don't you? Why don't we just start off by uh, you telling the, the guys who, who are listening a little bit about your channel, uh, about what you're doing, about a few of the features on your channel as well. Okay, well, first you flatter me by making me seem important, so thank <laughs> you for that. Um, but hey, everyone, uh, I'm Andrew, Yuri of Wind, guy with hair, whatever you want to refer to me as. And uh, I do gaming videos on YouTube and uh, GotGame.com. Shameless plug! Um, <laughs> I do reviews which everyone does but i also do vlogs which everyone does um but i'm also i also do gaming mysteries which no one else does so go me uh which is my big segment that everyone loves and then secretly despises everything else where i talk about beta and unreleased games and other gaming mysteries and it's it's all good shit yeah, because I, when I was doing the uh, preview for your, just for the interview, I, I was trying to sort of pin down what kind of channel it was, and it was there isn't really a set like you, I wouldn't really define your channel because you do do reviews, you do previews, you do the gamers mystery stuff, but it's it's just really a variety channel, isn't it? And I think that's what everyone likes about your channel the fact that you've got loads of different types of videos all happening at the same time, and obviously the gamers mysteries uh, one is something that like it's unique really i've never seen anyone do that type of video so how did you get the idea for that for the gamers mystery series <laughs> okay well uh, a long time ago in the days where i had really shitty internet magical days those were, yeah <laughs> i came across an article on the internet uh, about a thing called zelda 64 which is which was this early version of ocarina of time on the n64 for you new kids who don't know about yeah. the old consoles um <laughs> And it's this really fascinating article about this game that was completely different from the final products we got. And then I immediately afterwards looked for a site so I could buy it. And then I was like, oh, I can't because it was, never fucking came out. God damn it. Um, and then I, right after that, I came up, I found an article about Ura Zelda, which was for an unreleased expansion for Ocarina of Time. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. After reading both those, I became kind of infatuated with beta games and yeah. unreleased games. And then years down the line... I had gone on my uh, first semester break from my first year of college, and I wanted to make a new video, but I didn't want to make a review because I didn't fucking feel like it. <laughs> and uh, I thought, I'll, I'll just do a video on uh, on beta games and gaming mysteries, and I'm going to start with Zelda 64. Yeah. And But first I had to come up with a name because that's yeah. important. So I'm like, I'm going to call it Game Betas. And I was like, that name is shit. <laughs> Not going to call it that. Not to mention, if I call it game betas, then I'm kind of locked into doing videos about game betas. Yeah, and yeah. Anything else. And in that same line, I couldn't call it unreleased games, so I'm like, I'm going to call it gaming mysteries. Yeah. And then after a couple minutes, I'm like, that name sucks. <laughs> and then I was like, I need something more hardcore than that and extreme to appeal to the kids. And then yeah. I couldn't come up with shit. So I, just, so I just searched in YouTube gaming mysteries. No one else has it. Okay, I'm going to call this gaming mysteries. And that's yeah. how the segment came to be. Now, do you like do the? Is it just sort of you hear rumors, or you do? Do you actively sort of go out and do research for for the for the series? Because a lot of the stuff, like I, I never had an idea of the, the sort of stuff that was going on, the betas that were, or the base that were unreleased, and the games that were unreleased. So, how do you go about researching that? Is it just sort of a 
taking the time to go onto different gaming sites or do you is there somewhere you go for rumors or something like that yeah i i basically just search and shit yeah not on wikipedia because some people reference that and it's like hey, you're not supposed to do that to teach that shit in school yeah um but there are a lot of great sites that have uh interesting beta information and yeah you can just find interesting stuff like going to google i'm in google right now <laughs> uh final fantasy x beta and then shit will come up and then you can click on it and that's how the magic happens <laughs> so it really is just sort of thinking of different stuff to search and then just seeing if there's seeing if there's anything there yeah well that's generally how i come up with the ideas but for when i go to do an episode i i already know yeah, yeah what yeah. I, i'm gonna be doing and how much like research do you do for one episode of game mysteries uh, I don't actually have to do a ton because a lot of times there isn't a lot of information on yeah, these yeah. games, which is awesome because you know I love doing the segment and I it's not it's not even a big workload. So yeah, it's like it's the greatest thing. Yeah, ever. it's very good. And you said that's your that's the one that your viewers like the most. Is that the one you sort of get the most feed, feedback about, the most likes or whatever? Oh, definitely. Like, and a lot of messages like, "Hey, you're Eve Win." Can you do a game mysteries on Stop and Swap and <laughs> like Portal Two and um, Sonic Two and the uh, Earthbound sixty? Oh, you already did that one. Never mind. Um, <laughs> so, do you ever get ideas from your subscribers? If you had that, where you haven't thought of, thought of something or heard of something, and one of your subscribers has told you about it? Yeah, it's happened a few times actually. Yeah. Um, uh, just in the recent months, someone's like, uh, "Could you do something on?" Uh, the beta of Sonic Adventure. Yeah. And I didn't actually do that, but it kind of got me thinking about Sonic, and I'm like, well, I haven't done any on Sonic yet, so I'll do one on Sonic Extreme, the yeah. hardcore Sonic game. Yeah, so your subs help you out a little bit in that in that respect. Yeah. yeah okay. Um, was And was the... Um, I, I can't... I haven't looked at which your first video was. Was your first video a Game is Mystery one? My first video ever? Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> um... Uh, I guess we'll talk about that when we talk about the history. Yeah, yeah we, but, can, um, we can go into that now, I guess. What, so let's just talk about when you, what your channel was started as or uh, how it started. So why did you decide to start a YouTube channel? Okay, well, I joined YouTube on October 5th, 2008, and I know that because I'm <laughs> cheating and I have the page open. Okay, <laughs> you don't just have uh, it memorized or anything like that. I'm not that hardcore in YouTube. <laughs> um uh, but I made the channel on a day where I was skipping school in my senior year of high school because skipping school is fun. Write that down, <laughs> everyone. Um, and I I made the channel just because I was bored because yeah. I was skipping school. I didn't know I didn't have anything else to fucking do. Yeah. And I I was taking a lot of inspiration at the time from people like Angry Video Game Nerd, which yeah, everyone yeah. and their mother lists him. Yeah. As, yeah. And Nightwing Zero One. Yeah, yeah, he's got. I've got his channel as well. I might be contacting him in the future. Actually, he's got a good channel. But... Awesome. You should do that. You should also contact Jumble Junkie on a side note. Jumble I love Junkie. Jumble Junkie. Um, I, I don't actually watch him, but yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and do that. He's awesome. He has a sock. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, but I made the channel, and I'm like, well, i got to have videos five seconds after I made the channel. Yeah. And so uh, I figured the best thing to do was to take my crappy camera that was just for taking crappy pictures and – Point it in front of the TV, no tripod, not an yeah. HD TV. <laughs> Turn on the GameCube and play Bloody Roar Primal Fury. Oh, I remember I remember that game. <laughs> That's pretty weird. Yeah, I remember buying it. Great, yeah, great game. Yeah, yeah. It was a good game. Yeah. Um, uh, anyways, and I was just recording that and talking over it, and I called it a review. Yeah. And it was <laughs> terrible. Yeah. So five minutes afterwards, I did another one on, on a shitty game called Unlimited Saga for the PS2. Yeah. Um. And that's how the channel was born. And it was really a sad sight <laughs> for many months. Um, because when you first make a channel, it's important, or at least I think it's important, to know what you want to do. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Because otherwise, you're just doing anything and everything. Yeah. yeah. And that's essentially what I did. So I knew I wanted to do reviews, so I did that, and they were terrible. Yeah. I didn't even edit anything until like two months in. And even then, okay. it was with Windows Movie Maker, and it was yeah. awful. Um, but I was doing videos on Mugen, the f freeware fighting game. I had a bunch of videos about that up. And, uh, 
a segment about pirated games, which I then took down and revived months later and then revived and then took down and then revived, revived again recently. Yeah. Just milk an old franchise. Yeah. Um, so was it like a slow, slow growth process at the start? Did you get a lot of views and uh, when you started doing the filming in front of the telly or whatever? Uh, yeah, it was a slow process and I, I didn't get a lot of views for a really long time. I know that six or seven months into doing it, I only had like 150 subscribers. Yeah. That was in 2009. Yeah. Um, so you've been doing it a while then. Yeah, for almost uh, what's you know 11 minus three. <laughs> Simple math that I don't feel like doing right <laughs> Probably now. Probably shouldn't have skipped school to start a channel in the first place. But... Uh, that first year of college didn't teach me shit. <laughs> um, yeah. So, um, what was I going to say? Um, when, like, you say it was a slow start, or whatever. And was there like a turning point for you? Was there a point where you made a video and people, a lot of people, responded to that video? Can you like identify a point in which sort of the tires turned and your subscriber count started going up and? Was there, there like a specific point? Uh, there was actually. Um, there's a, there was actually two turning points. One where I actually not a lot of people know this, but I actually closed my channel yeah. for like two months. Okay. No one knows that. Yeah. <laughs> um. So that was the first turning point where I thought I was never going to do anything again. But then the actual turning point where people started watching my videos was actually when I started doing gaming mysteries. Oh, okay. So that was the big the big hit. Yeah, because up up until that point, you know, I had like 300 subscribers and yeah. then in December of 2009 I did that video and in one day it got a thousand views which that's yeah. that was so many views yeah that's that is a lot of views for one day for a for a small channel anyway that's that's a lot isn't it? and there was so much positive feedback and then I was like okay well I'm just gonna fucking roll with it yeah and so, I kept yeah go on know, oh I was just gonna say and I kept doing it and now now people watch it yeah, like so, never before so it was like it was the game in mysteries that that sort of kick-started the channel, really. Yeah, it kind of branded the channel in a way. Yeah, yeah. My, Aside from my hair, <laughs> I branded the channel. But <laughs> Have you done, like, any uh, face video sort of thing? Or is it all footage? Yeah, I have a couple of face videos. I only have, like, four. Yeah. Because just doing one of those is like asking, hey, I want you to insult me. <laughs> yeah, Come yeah, I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't imagine that. You're just putting yourself right out there on you for... Because you do... With you, I guess you've every YouTuber has had sort of trolls on their channel and people giving them insults, and it does when you do that face sort of face interview, you do open yourself up to it. But is that is the problem of trolls and people insulting you? Is that something you've had a problem with with your channel at all? Yeah, I mean everyone has a problem with that at some yeah. point or another, and it doesn't matter how big your channel is because there are assholes everywhere, especially considering this is the internet. So yeah. <laughs> can't get away from that. Yeah. Um. I've had people troll in like really obvious ways. Like, can I uh, say the F word? Yeah, not fuck yeah. the other. You know, I've had people call me a fag a lot. Yeah, yeah. and I'm just like, well, <laughs> I'm gonna block you. Fuck yeah, you. you might as um, well. Yeah, it's just it is pointless, especially. That's not constructive criticism. Yeah, exactly, exactly. That is what you, constructive criticism is. What you want, but you're a um, fag. I'll take that into consideration when I make the next one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But I've gotten stuff like that. I've had people post on Gaming Mysteries like, oh, this game was released. Yeah. I'm like, no, it wasn't. I'm like, yeah, it was. Only in Japan. I'm like, no, it wasn't. Like, Miyamoto told me. I'm like, shut up. <laughs> Miyamoto told you nothing. <laughs> but at the moment, when you've got – is that something that sort of got worse as the channel's got bigger? Or is it as you sort of got – because I guess as you um, sort of grow as a YouTuber, you get – a bit more professional I'd say with sort of producing your videos and the quality is better and you're better at commentating so I guess although your channel is bigger the number of trolls might decrease just because there's less to hate on if you've got a more professional finish a bit of a shine to the videos is that something that has happened to you uh I would say yes and no because in theory that makes sense yeah. because I mean trolls will look for anything to hate on and if they can't find anything then well they're just going to call you names yeah, yeah. um <laughs> So in that regard, I still get that. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. I th I think no matter what, you, trolls are they're just always going to be there. It doesn't yeah. matter how professional your stuff is. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah. Always going to be there. Yeah, that's true. 